speaking about the mission moving forward and getting into this 2021 season, I thought it, it, an area of church planting for us to talk about today to really put our heads together and maybe even disagree a little bit is the models of church planting. Family, multiplication, restoration. I'm Dahadi Lewis. Join me, Noah Odom and Hayden Radden, as we come to you from Atlanta, St. Louis, and Las Vegas, as we seek to add value to your church planning journey. We'll have real-time, authentic conversations that are relevant to the life of the church planner and pastor. Join us as we hear from leaders of this movement from across North America and discover what it really takes to plant churches everywhere for everyone. Well, welcome to another episode of the We Are Send Network podcast. My name is Noah Oldham, the lead pastor of August Gate in St. Louis, joined as always with Dahadi Lewis, the lead pastor of Blueprint in Atlanta, Georgia, and Hayden Ratner, the senior pastor of Walk Church in Las Vegas. Brothers, it is a new year. It is uh, 2021. The calendar has turned. How are you feeling, Dahadi? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I got, you know, got my little jacket on, you know, it's getting a little frosty out here in, in Atlanta, in the A-Town. So we, you know, we're feeling good, feeling good. Ready to hey, go. Uh, Hayden, there's some, some people say uh, new year, new you. Want to talk about New Year's resolutions as we get started. Do you have any resolutions personally? You have any resolutions for your church? Talk to us about that. Man, thank you. Glad to be on. And hey, just really quick, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, it's a new year. Go ahead and do something new. Share it, like it, subscribe, review, all that. Yeah, for me, Noah, I'm picking up from our last podcast a few weeks ago. I mentioned it then. I want to stay true to it now. I want to be a less rushed leader. I want to, I want to enter into this different season uh, fresh, prepared, focused, ready, without being so rushed. I find I make mistakes as a husband, dad, pastor, planter when I'm rushed. And so that's me personally for our church. Our New Year's resolution is to be a praying church, not just a church that prays. And so we, you know, we had a, a first Wednesday prayer meeting throughout the duration of our church. But this year we're doing a every Wednesday prayer meeting. And so that's new for us. We want to really shape a culture of being a praying church. So, hey, we're starting it off right. Let's go. Good. That's good. Dahadi, what about you, man? New, New Year's resolutions for you, for your church, for your family? Man, I just got this, the the traditional joints. You know how we do it. Like, I'm still trying to get in shape. I want to eat right. I'm trying to get back to my playing weight, you know, back you know, back in my, my University of North Texas days. But I, I would say this one, this year, and I'm going to go public with it because, you know, I'm just, I want go some public with it. I want to go public with it. This year, I'm going to be at least conversational in Spanish. Espanol. So for all my Spanish speaking, hit me up because I'm trying to understand that. Como estas muy bien. I am doing well. I'm excited. So yeah, this is do it. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to learn Spanish. I'm trying to learn Spanish. I got my teacher. We've been meeting. We've been going, and I'm gonna get it. What what's the goal there? How do you tell us? What, what what's what's the impetus behind learning Spanish at this well, point in your I life? Mean, I, I mean, I just think. I mean, I'm I'm a native of California. You know, that's why I'm a Laker fan, native California. So I grew up in, you know, Spanish speakers, around Spanish speakers, around my, my Mexican-American brothers and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, I just, I've always been intrigued by the, the culture. I've always wanted to, and especially that's one of the focuses that we have as, um, you know, in the Network. I mean, when we think about the growing number you know, of Spanish speakers here in the U.S. I think it's really important for us to be able to communicate to people in their heart's language, you know, and, right. you know, and I think that that is one of the ones that I'm really passionate about. And, you know, and so I want to do that. So by the convention, you know, so I'm going all out there by the convention this year, I'm going to be delivering a message in Spanish. Hold I'm on delivering now. A message. That's I'm telling you, I'm going, I'm put. I'm going out there, you know, I'm well, see, ain't playing. If, so if you put it out there, you know, I'm going to speak that thing into existence, you okay. know, and then we go, we just, we go, we go move it. We go move the ball forward with it. Now notice he didn't say the, the length of the message. This could be a strong two minute -er and that would still be legit. So we, we're going to no. give you whatever, whatever no, no, time I'm, I'm going, duration you I'm need. I'm going to 430. I'm going to 430 minimum, 430 minimum in Nuevo Spanish. Año. Espanol. Man, sí. new year, new to I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, guys, that is awesome. Um, I'm excited for a new year, a new year of this podcast, a new year for us to explore church planting. The, the uh, 
resolution our church has, the plan that we have, is we are planting a church in the midst of a pandemic in 2021. Um, in the middle of the pandemic this last year, one of the members of my team, I've had to keep it quiet because we hadn't put it before our body yet and got all the details, but a member of my team comes to me and says, God's calling me to plant a church. And uh, we just said, hey, we're going to trust God. And he went through the Send Network assessment, which has been amazing, even in the midst of pandemic going virtual. That team assessed, uh, he and his wife, they passed, they are ready to go. So they're going to start a residency. And at the end of this year, we're going to be sending them out to plant a new church in the St. Louis region. We're pumped. The mission nice. moves forward. Let's go. Now, speaking about the mission moving forward and getting into this 2021 season, I thought it, it, an area of church planting for us to talk about today to really put our heads together and maybe even disagree a little bit is the models of church planting. The models of church planting, as I've seen this over the last decade plus of church planting, two models seem to emerge really in every context. You've got the neighborhood model, planting a church in a neighborhood to reach that specific neighborhood. And then you get more of a regional model, uh, a church that plants in a, an area or identifies with an area or a city. Uh, larger than just a neighborhood, and often reaches a specific demographic or demographics from that entire region. They pull from that. Now, I want us to talk about that a little bit, but as we do, let's get started with this. Uh, thinking about those two models, did you plant with one of those models in mind? And if so, why? Dahadi, let's start with you, man. Which model did you plant with? Well, you know, our, our story is a little bit unique from the vantage point of you know, we had 40 people move from other states to come here to plant. And so when we first came, I told everyone, hey, let's move to a certain town, East Atlanta Village. It's a, it's a certain area, neighborhood in the city of Atlanta. But when we came out here, it was 2008, 2009, when people were moving out here. And so what ended up happening is like, that's when the economy crashed. And so they ended up like just still coming, but finding any place to live. So we ended up having people in center of Atlanta. We ended up having people in North Atlanta, South Atlanta, like all around. And so what ended up happening for us is that we came in with the idea of planting a very neighborhood specific church, but we ended up planting a regional church um, because of just the economy and because of just like the desire. So we had a plan, but God had a different plan. And, but from that, like it kind of created our strategy, our church planning strategy that like, our strategy is to fight back to a region or a, a neighborhood model to the point where I would even say that Blueprint Church, my goal here, I'm at the old Fourth Ward campus. Um, our goal would be that I want 50% of our church to be able to walk the church. Mm. You know, that's our heart. We want to be able to get people to that are walking to church. And we're able to do that because we're in the, you know, we're in a dense part of the city, you know, which a lot of our churches that we'll plant won't be able to have that same type of goal. But that's kind of our focus to kind of in a commitment to plant in this uh, cluster. Love it. Yeah. What about you, Hayden? What, what model did you plant with and, and why? Yeah, I, I would say that we probably had a, a little bit, maybe the two had a baby and that was our model. Um, but I would say if we had a leaning, it would be a little bit more toward regional city language that was a lot of our language early on we still use it to this day you know for the city and um we wanted our church to be a reflection of the city we say often las vegas isn't the city of sin but the city of him and so we want our church to be a reflection of that but we also rec recognize we had a lot of the opposite of what dahadi was just sharing in that even in, to my surprise there's people that were driving to our church or our charge groups our small groups from like really far distances in the city. And so yeah. I think that we began to realize who, who do we have? What type of uh, body do we have? We have people from all different parts of the city and they want to be a part of our culture and our church. And so we said, okay, well, if we, if we have a, a multicultural or an aspiring multicultural church, uh, I think we're always going to be growing in that area. Uh, then we need to have a multicultural expression that's for the city. And I think we're continuously, you know, our church just turned five years old recently and we have uh, far from arrived from that goal, from, from being there, but we're, we're working on that. It's a, we want to be a church in the city for the city, um, regardless of where we're at. So, yeah, yeah our story is a little bit 
different from both of yours, uh, kind of the opposite of the hotties. We came in to South City, St. Louis in a neighborhood called Soulard. The north end of Soulard is the farmer's market, and you can see the arch. The, the south end of the neighborhood is Anheuser-Busch Brewery, and so planting a Baptist church right there in the midst of that was uh, a really unique experience. Uh, but we wanted to be in Soulard and reaching Soulard, but we found out really quickly is uh, almost nobody in our church could afford to live in Soulard. Like, I couldn't even afford to live in Soulard. There weren't places that I could get in um house which is an interesting concept there um real creative class ownership it's where uh, mardi gras happens every year so we were just outside the neighborhood but serving the neighborhood caring for the neighborhood schools in the neighborhood we were engaged with but what we began to find is we we grew we were reaching people from a 50 mile radius in either direction and so all of a sudden our strategy turned into we're going to plant churches Anywhere we have people, we, we would tell people, anywhere we have a small group, we want you to multiply. And as that small group multiplies, that is the beginning of a new church plant. Mm -hmm. And so what we found ourselves started out as a neighborhood church and then began to grow and turn into a regional church model. And uh, now we find ourselves very squarely in that regional church um, situation and our multi-gathering church actually turned into autonomous churches. And one of the churches, the one that is there in South City still, uh, it has become more of a neighborhood centered model church all these years later. It's kind of come full circle. I want to talk about this, especially since we're going to find guys and different ends of the spectrum in our network as they go through orientation, they go through send network training, they kind of put out their uh, their preference or their call. I want to talk about the strengths of each of these. And so, Dahani, since you're moving your church that direction, what are some of the, the strengths of a neighborhood model church plant? Oh, I mean, I think some of the strengths is like our mission statement is that we want to unleash healthy people to do ministry where life exists. And for us, like, we've gotten an opportunity to be present. And, you know, when we think about being present, the idea of intersection, not addition, like we, like there's people literally on my neighborhood, on my block that are church members. Like we have like two houses down, there's another church member, three houses down, there's another church member. And so like, we're literally seeing each other. We're literally doing life together with each other. We're like, we're all going to the same schools. We're shopping at the same grocery stores. You know, and so when we're ministering, so like we're ministering to people, our neighbors, it says, hey, I got a chance to talk to so-and-so. Oh, yeah, I was talking to him the other day. And so like we're tag teaming on relationships. We're, and we get the opportunity to invite people into our lifestyle, our rhythm, you know. And I think it's a, a way, another way of saying it is the world will know you're my disciples because of your love for one another. They get a chance to see our one another love outside of the context of a church or a small group or a meeting. They just get a chance to see us on our porches, hanging out, connecting and all of that. And we get the chance to tag team on, on kind of being missional in things. And so it's just kind of like, and, and with the, the biggest part of it is, is that it's all a part of our neighborhood. It's the ownership of our neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. and so it's just been really um, very beneficial from that vantage point from just kind of being uh, a neighborhood driven, you know, yeah. kind of part of our church. Now, Hayden, I know you have a little bit of a marriage of the two models. And so I, I know even from intimate knowledge of your church, uh, you have connection kind of in, in that area with a school and with that community. So what would you say? What would you add to that? What are some of the benefits of the neighborhood model? Yeah, I think the benefits of the neighbor model is that you create a presence in the neighborhood. And, you know, the presence of the local church is so needed right now. It's it's 2021. Barna is producing statistics that are staggering. Churches are closing left and right. People are turning away from the church. 20-somethings somethings are saying, hey, the, the, the church doesn't have a place for me. The church doesn't really care about me. The church really doesn't do things that are beyond Sunday, and Sundays are typically boring. This is a lot of the reputation of the bride of Christ in America. Come on, we need to see that changed. Church planners need to see, are, are going to be the answer to this terrible shift. And so I think what, what is so dope about new churches multiplying and reproducing and planting in cities, but specifically in neighborhoods within cities, is it brings this new reputation of the, the church as something that's life-giving. And so what happened for us is we wanted to plant and we wanted to launch out of the middle school that I, I went to growing up and really wanted to be a blessing to this specific area. We started to hear teachers 
and started to hear students and started to hear people around the city say like, that wasn't so bad. Or that, or started to say, Hey, I think I'm going to bring somebody. And I think that's really beautiful is when people, when you start to have an inviting culture to lost people where people start to see church less as a burden, more as a breath of fresh air. Uh, you start to see why the church really exists. Um, which is to, to be a bridge toward to, to God. And so um, that's why I think it's beneficial to, to plant churches in cities, but also in, in neighborhoods, man, we need to, we need to get the reputation of the body of Christ back to life giving mm -hmm. in our cities. Yeah. It's a burden on my heart right now. It's good. And one of the things I noticed because we planted a neighborhood model church is that early on, all those things you're saying, it was, uh, we're engaged in the neighborhood and, and we have a presence in the neighborhood. But what I found is like, in our city, like life is transient. Like the people that, that live in the neighborhood, I, I remember hearing people say, um, I, I, don't, I don't live here. This is where I stay. And I began to ask, like, is that just vernacular? And some of it was just vernacular. Other people said, no, like, I've never lived anywhere very long. I've moved around St. Louis my entire life, north side, wow. south side, staying with mom, staying with dad, staying with grandma. And, and so the transience of our city meant all of a sudden, if we've connected with people and a year from now, they've moved to the north side, are they no longer connected with us? Are we sending them out? Mm. What if they need deep discipleship that God isn't calling them to go plug into another church and start that journey over? And so we saw some challenges to that in the transiency of our city. We also saw this, this insular culture we had to continue to fight against. It's all about this neighborhood or all about this part of the city. And people beginning to say disparaging things about other parts of the city or wow. the suburbs. That was a big thing. Oh, the suburbs and jokes about Walmart because those things don't, don't exist where, where we're at in the city. You know, it's the corner store and things like that. And so uh, there's, there's some of those, those things that as God began to expand our vision of reaching a larger and having an influence in a larger area, we just saw some of the shortfalls that hey, God isn't calling us to just reach this neighborhood. We've got to reach other people too. It's a stewardship he'd given us. Um, so what would you guys say? Are there, are there any things, any challenges that a neighborhood model church needs to look out for and, and prepare for so that they can overcome um, in, in maybe in those early years or as the church gets a little bit older? Yeah, I would definitely say that there's there's definitely challenges to anything. And you mentioned some of the challenges, you know, that, that we have. I, I do think, you know, I, I relate a lot of the neighborhood model to very similar to like, if I don't know if you guys have been in college ministry. Um, well, like in college ministry, you have a campus and there's so much intersection right. that, that takes place. And sometimes, you know, for people who like to have clear boundaries in the sense of this is where ministry starts, this is where ministry stops, this is, you know, um, a lot of times, because I mean, I live in the middle of the neighborhood, like I'm like a literally like less than 100 paces from the church doors. And I get constant people knocking on my door from the neighborhood, you know? Um, so it's just kind of like, and it's after I've done my work day, you know, quote unquote work day, you know? And so it's like, you, you know, you hear about like the pastor's never off, but like in a neighborhood in kind of the way we do ministry, that's a legitimate and a real thing. It's never wow. done because people are constantly coming. And so there's a fatigue. And so sometimes you have to literally get away in order to kind of find those moments of rest and break and all of this. And then, you know, you also got to learn how to help pace your people because if you're modeling that as a leader or a pastor, that mm -hmm. same type of mentality um, is taking place with people who have also nine to five jobs. But unlike us, sometimes those nine to five jobs don't, are not as flexible with our freedom, you know, in terms of taking breaks and vacations and rhythms and all that. So you got to help get your people to take breaks and have nice rhythms so that they can um, be ready for the long haul. It's good. It's good. Anything you yeah. add to that? Adam? Yeah, no, that's good. I just think that we need to steward the, the momentum, the move that God is sending us. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at your church and um, your core team, whatever that looks like, um, you want to ask the question, you know, like I said, for us, we just started to sense, man, our church, we wanted it to be more neighborhood, but it ended up becoming more city. And um, we felt like, okay, well, we need to steward what God's given us and, and, and be okay with that. Not just be okay with that, but lean into that. Yeah. And so we felt like God, God was blessing that. I would just say one more challenge of the neighborhood church to just be 
just be aware of is um, if, if you're, if you're so focused on your, your neighborhood only, you could end up planning a church that looks like your neighborhood, but that becomes very cliquish or becomes very guarded toward other cultures, other colors, other people, other backgrounds. And so what happens is people then feel like they can't invite somebody that may be of a different type of vibe or say from a different neighborhood. Right. And so I think we still want to have churches that may be in the neighborhood, in the community that that's for that community, but is diverse enough that anybody at any time could come and be valued, be seen and feel like, Hey, this is a place for me too. I might not live in the gated community or might, might not live in the projects, but I live down there and I need Jesus and there's a seat for me there. So I think continuing to create space for all types of culture and, and sin even <laughs> for, for people that are broken to find yeah. space in the, in the body. And one of the things I would add to that is the, the challenge of just being in a neighborhood. Just understand that neighborhood churches are going to grow slower. Mm-hmm. They're going to grow slower because, you know, when you're, a lot of times when you're doing kind of the regional model, it's just how whoever may come is like advertising, it's marketing, it's, mm-hmm. you know, you're just getting the word out, you know, as people right. um, come and it's people are inviting their friends, whoever they are to it. Um, to these things and you know that's the the thing but when you're in a neighborhood like it's we blueprint has been in this neighborhood for a little over eight years now um eight almost moving on nine nine years now and there are people in the neighborhood that like that have been born and raised in the neighborhood are just starting to come wow right the last couple years because but we've done lots of ministry with them. We know them really well. We've engaged with them really well, but it was kind of like, it was stuff that, you know, we did with them, but they're now starting to come and take ownership of the church and say, this is my church in which I'm a part of. And, you know, and it's so, but that's, but that's a long, that's a long haul. So that's kind of why for us, we were both, we are regional. We have about almost 20 city groups um, all across Metro Atlanta, but, uh, but, you know, but a lot of, you know, we have here is kind of, we have them focus in as kind of small, like neighborhood, like house churches in a sense, you know, as we um, create. And so I think that's just important for us to recognize that you yeah. understand that if you are going to be very uh, proximity driven, that you got to build that for the long haul. That's good. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, the neighborhood thing, man, uh, I think it's it's here to stay. I heard it years ago that that middle range church with all the challenges we're facing um, as a culture, that middle range church is probably going to go away and it was going to be we're going to be left with more uh, mega churches. And those are few and far between, but then a lot of neighborhood churches. And uh, I'm anxious to see as we come into another decade of what that's going to look like in the landscape, especially post covid well, guys, um, we've run out of time today. And so I think this is probably part one of this subject. I think we'll do another podcast. We talk about the regional model and the benefits and the challenges of that as well. But we're going to have church planters um, planting all kinds of churches in all kinds of places for all kinds of people. And we right. want to see that we're continue to grow in that. And so, hey, Dahadi, um, one last word just from you on this. You've planted this. I would love to hear from you. If you were to plant all over again, if you were to start today, which model would you plant in and why? Man, I think that, that that's a great question. And I think that that's a question specific to me that I think is not a right, you know, I would not put that on anyone because right. I think that, to, like we've all said, I think you got to, context matters. And I think that's what really what we're saying is context matters. And we can't just go in putting on something, laying over like a strategy or philosophy that doesn't match our city context, right? Atlanta is moving. So if I was coming to Atlanta, Atlanta is moving and is already in a very neighborhood driven. People don't say that, like, if you live in the city, you say, I'm from Old Fourth Ward. I'm from Grant Park. I'm from, like, they say the neighborhood that they're from if you're in the, the areas. So it's a lot of neighborhood pride And so I would plan a, I would plan a neighborhood church if I was planting in Atlanta. But, you know, if you're in the suburbs, if I was planting in the suburbs of Atlanta, I would say a regional church because it is more regionally driven, you know, and all of that. And so people are more used to getting in their cars or whatever. So I think it's a lot different in in everything. And so like for us, like we're trying to plant a church in Pittsburgh, 
You know, there's an area that's like about only four or five miles from our church, but they're not coming to our church. The people in that neighborhood are not coming here. So I would plant another neighborhood church there. Yeah. So, I, so I just think that what we got, what we're saying is, is that context matters. And I can't wait till we can talk about some of the benefits of kind of the of regional model. So I'm not an either or. I, I, I really believe that there's both a uh, both and, you know, and I, I feel comfortable with planting either both a, um, a neighborhood church or a regional church. That's good. That's good. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of the We Are Send Network podcast. As always, if you want to know more information about church planting, and specifically church planting with the Send Network, you can text SEND Network to 888-123, SEND Network to 888-123, or check us out at sendnetwork.com. We want to connect with you. We want this to add value. We want to see churches planted everywhere for everyone, to see a multiplying church in every community across North America. Until next time. We are Send Network. Feliz Cupiano. You have been listening to We Are Sin Network, a resource of the North American Mission Board. For more information about today's podcast and other relevant resources, visit sendnetwork.com.